is Dina Does. I'm Dina, and I know a little bit about a lot, but I want to know more. So join me on this path to self-discovery. This week on Dina Does, we are doing Fitness 101 with my personal fitness guru, Paulina, who is a fitness and nutrition expert. Welcome, Paulina. Thank you so much for having me. I've been so excited to do this. I know. I'm so excited to have you because you, you know, as people know, if you follow me on Instagram, you train me a few times a week and um, we have the best conversations about nutrition and fitness and you like obviously there's things like everyone knows, but you're like on a different level with your knowledge. So I'm like, we have to get you on the podcast because this information needs to be shared. And every week there's something different. So we're going to be bouncing all over the place. But what we decided on today is we're just going to like cover the basics and we'll have you on from time to time to discuss more and expand on everything. So let's just start with, um, here I am. I'm a little bit in the older bracket. Um, you could be my daughter. (laughs) Um, you're actually a year older than my daughter. And I was a little intimidated when we started working together. I'm like, she's so young. She's not, you know, she's going to train me the way she trains. And we're like, I'm like double her age, but you didn't, you knew exactly what my body needed. Um, and you know, that's the thing about fitness that people don't understand is you can't just follow like one and done as your body changes, you need to adjust it. So, um, let's start with those who are listening, who are in like the 20 to 35, um, year old range. What is like basic fitness? If you had to give them like the top three things that you should focus on when you start training on that age, and then we'll go up. Okay. Well, first off, everybody thinks fitness is the, like the key to everything, to weight loss, to maintaining, et cetera. However, there's three different things that you have to focus on. It's diet movement and water. So those three things is what I tell people to combine for the perfect result. But as far as movement, it could be anything. It could be something like a class. It could be going to the gym. It could be walking your dog around the neighborhood. So basically I always recommend people start off with movement because you can always work your way up. But like, for example, that age range, a lot of people like going to classes, they like doing, you know, Pilates or yoga or anything, but it's just finding what works for that individual. Like you said, you know, everybody's so different. So I recommend finding something that they like and like expanding on it. Yeah. So moving your body is very important. Exactly. And I remember when I was 20 something, um, even though nutrition is important, I can get away with eating a little differently than like, I look at my daughter and what she eats and her body. So I think movement for that age group is super important because that's, what's going to get you like healthy rather than looking great. Exactly. You'll still look good, you know, in your twenties for the most part, Mm -hmm. because you've got, you know, youth on your side (laughs) But to feel good. Yeah. A lot of people think that just because maybe like they're in their twenties, they may have a faster metabolism than someone in their fifties. They can stop moving as much because they're like, Oh, I can eat whatever I want and still kind of look the same. But movement, especially at this age is so important, whatever it is, like, like I said, a walk or anything, just any movement helps. So that's a great place to start. Okay. So, um, as we, let's discuss like the 35 to 50, um, what do you have to incorporate? What do you have to be more cognizant of as you age in that area? Diet weights. Okay. That's a different one. Like I was also explaining to you when we first met, Dina was like, oh, I do lots of like cardio. I do like, you know, yoga stuff or walking or this or that. And I was telling her at the, probably around the age 30, our skin starts to lose a list, a list, elasticity. Why, why can't I say it? Elasticity. Oh my God. No, I can't say it. <laughs> elasticity. Right. It's like a tongue twister, but And as our skin kind of starts to lose that and it starts to fall a little bit, that's when people get the, the skinny fat is what they call it. It's where you don't have as much muscle tone, your hormones are all over the place and you just feel blah. So I recommend at that age, you know, really start to lift weights because weights are going to be your best friend. The more muscle you have, the more fat you burn at rest, which also makes your body look better and you feel better and also feel younger. So Weights are probably the number one thing I recommend in this age group. 
Yeah. And I really didn't start with weights until I started training with you. Cause I was more of a Pilates exactly. um, recumbent bike and I'm seeing, I'm getting more results with the short, you know, we work out like 45 minutes to an hour, twice a week. I'm getting more results with that than I did doing Pilates three or four times a week, which I still love Pilates. Yeah, of course. And we've incorporated it into our routine as well, but the weights have made even just this little amount, 45 minutes, twice a week has made such a difference in my everything. Absolutely. It changes your body composition because like I said, if you see someone who's 150 and another person who's 150 and one person who only does cardio and one person who does weights, their bodies look completely different at the same exact weight. It's just the composition. And especially women, we like to like feel those feminine curves and stuff. So the weights are key to doing that. Yeah. And we talked, I'm sorry, my landscapers here. I mean, it's every day there's a painter or something, but this is why Every week I have a reference Dina does is at my kitchen counter so I can have natural conversations and feel most comfortable. I love um, it. So yeah, it just, I wanted it as, as normal and real as possible. And while you're working out, your landscaper may just show up. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, when my biggest concerns as I get older, because I've always been fortunate where I didn't have to work out a lot. I've had, you know, I build muscle kind of quickly, even um, there was a summer or two in the Hamptons where I would like run every day and my, my legs got so muscular and I I was freaking out because I'm like, I'm running and I'm getting bigger, but it's because I wasn't doing the Pilates with it. And I was also a little bit younger. So my muscle built so quick, but now I have what we call, um, Oh my reference. gosh, don't even go there. <laughs> the under our vagina, <laughs> which is like this nice little pussy pack. You, have right here. She, you guys, she always tells me that that's the area she wants to target. I'm like, what are you talking about? For those who aren't watching it, we all know what that is. It's the area like right when your underarm folds. And if you're wearing a strapless dress or something, it looks like a little puffy Chucky. It, it's called the bra <laughs> fat area as you know, most people reference it, but most women actually have it because that's an area that's really hard to target. And it kind of, it gets bigger and it grows based off your body fat. So that's just where your body can store fat. Also, there's a lot of hormones in this area, especially women's bodies. So if you noticed men don't usually have that, have you noticed that? You know what? You're right. Yeah. No, that that's crazy? not fair. That's <laughs> not fair. Men, men have the whole easy route of everything. They really do. <laughs> really do. Um, so anyway, okay. I can't believe this blower. Is it really loud by you? No, not at all. Oh, okay. Um, so we have to build muscle as we get older. Obviously that helps with our metabolism. Again, like you said, the saggy skin, that'll build it up a little bit. Um, let's talk quickly about diet. What is the one thing, or let's say two things that if you want to work on your fat alone, rather than building muscle with the protein, and everything, just work on losing some fat. What do you suggest that you cut out of your diet? First off, I suggest drinking more water. Most of the time, especially women, we are mostly dehydrated actually most of the time because your body needs a certain amount of water per day to function properly. That's meaning your organs, your digestive system, everything, your skin too. Your body needs water to flush everything, flush the toxins, because when everything is functioning properly, you are losing weight easier, faster, and without even realizing it. So is most- there such a thing of drinking too much water? Cause I heard if you drink too much, it flushes out the minerals that you need. Yes. And no, I think, I don't think people are drinking three gallons of water a day. You know, mm-hmm. that's where that's flushing it out too much. But I mean, I always have my gallon water with me all the time, just because So, what's your recommendation. How many gallons, a gallon, One a, gallon day? a day, 128 okay. ounces. I can show you, like, I even have my water with me right now, but I like to set like goals, like by morning time, I'll drink to here or here or by afternoon. They even have those jugs that they sell. Exactly. You know, I saw but, Oprah drinking it. <laughs> but one thing is women, especially are very, very visual. We love visual results. We love seeing things in person. We like things that come to life. Same with water. Like if you're filling up a little tiny water bottle, you know, 12 times to equal a gallon, you're going to lose track of it. And it's going to be harder for you to really get that gallon. in. So I recommend buying an actual physical gallon where you can see it. And you're like, wow, set little goals for yourself. And then at the end of the day, you're like, wow, I just accomplished a goal. And then the next day you weigh less. Yeah. And I mean, like you said, it helps your skin. I noticed, um, 
you know, as my, my daughter always meant, she's like, you're getting grandma's hands. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> but when I drink a lot of water, I don't see that exactly as much. Um, so it's, it's a win-win everywhere. It helps you poop better. It helps you with everything. So exactly. It makes water. weight loss easier. And that's the goal. You want to work smarter or yeah, work smarter, not harder. So I don't think there's a lot of straight men listening to this. So this is, um, so if, if you're listening women, this is the one thing that Pauline and I were talking about the other day that blew my freaking mind. Um, and we are talking about bloat during ovulation. She came over and I was like, oh my God, I'm ovulating. And she was like, oh my God, so am I. And then <laughs> we're on the I same was, cycle now. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I was complaining how bloated I was and you blew me away with this fact. Go ahead. Okay. So most of the time women, we have, obviously we have hormones, we have different, you know, parts of our monthly cycle, no, no matter what length your cycle is, you'll always have those, like, you know, a couple weeks where you're just like, blah, I feel bloated. I'm super hungry. I want to crave all the chocolate. I want this. I want that, whatever it may be. But I was telling Dina during ovulation, there's a reason why some people get on the scale and they can gain up to five pounds overnight, five freaking five pounds pounds overnight, because when you ovulate, it stimulates a follicle to drop the egg. The hormones LH can actually cause you to slow down your digestive system because your body's focusing more on the reproductive part of it than the digestive part of it. Like your body wants to focus on one thing at a time, which is why it lacks in other areas, which is why you can feel bloated. You can get acne because your body's not functioning as well. Like at that time, you know, and five pounds overnight, I literally will have clients who they are doing so well and I'll get, you know, a million messages in the morning, like multiple of them, but they're like, I gained five pounds overnight. I didn't do anything differently. I'm listening, doing everything right. And I'm like, are you ovulating? Yes. See, and that's exactly what happened to me last week. I was doing another cleanse and I was like, I was so happy because I got down past a certain goal that I hadn't seen in a while on the scale. And then I got back on it. I was like four pounds over what I was like the The night before. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the heck? And then you put my mind at ease that it was just ovulation, which is wild because that's when men find women most attractive when they're ovulating because it's like, you know, our hormones give off like we're fertile at that time. So for us to feel so self-conscious at a time where actually men are finding us the most attractive. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Because are you one of those people during ovulation where you feel just like blah? Because I feel like blah. Like some girls, they say feel great and they feel like they're sexiest at that time. But then some of them are like, eh. Well, I, it's probably girls who are like a little more flatter chest. Uh, so when they're ovulating, they get a little puffier and they're like, Ooh, I feel sexy or more, you know, shapely. But for someone like me, who's got, you know, the curves to begin with, it just it added on to it. Yeah. <laughs> so I do feel blah. I have to pay more attention because, um, I think I was talking to my daughter about this too, where she actually feels really good and energetic during ovulation. And, and then the PMS curls in. After that, we were like talking about hormones, which uh, there's nothing, you know, like PMS for the boys who are listening. Just be glad you don't have to deal with that shit. Exactly. So ovulation also, it's the LH hormone and the estrogen really peaks. And that's why some people feel good on the estrogen and some people don't feel good with that much estrogen. But then as soon as you're, you're done ovulating, that's when progesterone is just rising, 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 rising until you start your period. And then you feel better. Because yeah. also progesterone is what causes the appetite increase, you know, the hormonal acne, excuse my language, the bitchiness. I think mm-hmm. we all kind of get that. We notice that during um, that PMS week and also that bloat, you know, I'm someone who gets super bloated right before my period. I know you are too. Most mm-hmm. women do. But then as soon as you start, you know, your digestive system, it's like, is back end of, it's like yes, exactly. Yeah. It's like, you know, the biggest, like, oh, I can breathe again. I'm, I'm back to normal. Yeah, my husband, I'm like, I'm not crazy anymore. (laughs) (laughs) It's me again. (laughs) I always have an an alter ego. Her name is Mina. (laughs) So Mina (laughs) definitely shows up (laughs) a few days before my period. We just had, um, I think you may air after, and I'm not sure of the schedule when Dr. Hall, Prudence Hall um, is on and we talk, she has the Hall Center in Santa Monica. She um, talks a lot about hormones and how birth control and everything affects young 
women. So don't think you're out of this conversation if you're a teen or in your 20s. Oh, definitely um, be not. Because it's really affecting everyone differently. And all of the chemicals that we're putting in and on our body, environmental and everything will make these things even more um, prominent. So we really have to pay attention to where, where our cycle is, how we're feeling about ourselves and just go with you know grace and be easy on ourselves because we are we are moving with the, with the moon and everything else. So there's the moon's even puffy once a month too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, you know, and I'm not a hormone doctor, but I do, I look at, you know, patterns. I've worked with thousands of thousands of thousands of women. And every time around the same parts of the month, I tell them, Hey, are you ovulating? Are you about to start your period? It really does affect your weight and also yeah. how you feel about your body. A lot of women are, like you said, very insecure, self-conscious. Yeah. I want people to know this is totally normal. It's very, very common. It happens to every woman, no matter if you're menopausal, postmenopausal, premenopausal in your twenties, if you're a teenager, it, it really affects everybody, but I just want you to encourage you to keep going and know that this is a common thing that you will get past and it is only temporary. Do you recommend when you're going through those times, like just fuck it, let's have some pizza and wine, or should you just stay the course? Hell yeah. Okay. Girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we all went right. to dinner last week. Did you see all the stuff that I ate? I, I, I have can vouch for this woman because I sat there being a good girl and the three of you, we went with our husbands, ate your faces off dessert and everything. And then of course, because it's sitting in front of me, I ate some dessert and went off my cleanse, but it was worth it. It was delicious. But I was also encouraging her. You were, you were. I, yeah, because you have to live your life. You know, it's about balance. If you're restricting yourself, there's, so the reason why you're on your journey is to feel good and feel your best and look your best. But if you're not enjoying the reason why, why you're doing that, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm all for a strict, um, few weeks where you're doing oh, a cleanse for a specific yeah. reason. If it's a, you know, organ cleanse, liver cleanse, kidney, all of that, and really staying the course, but how could you live like that? Always? Like you said, you're not going to enjoy yourself when you're traveling, when you're going, you know, date night or whatever it's again, balance. We come back to, I swear we talk about balance every freaking episode of Dina does. Yeah. It, oh. It's no matter what the topic is, we, it goes back to balance. Cause that's what living an amazing life is all about is balancing it out and being disciplined when you need to, but also enjoying and indulging once in a while. And, um, that's really key to, like you said, it's not just this hyper focus on fitness and eating right. It's living well. And that's the bottom line. Yeah. It's balance in every area of your life to create the perfect balanced lifestyle, you know? Yeah. And, you know, like, and the same goes for like diet, someone who's constantly restricting themselves over and over and over and over and over again, they're not enjoying their life. No. And I'm sure no. it does affect other areas of their life. If you're constantly restricting yourself with food, how is that affecting your marriage? Yeah. How is that affecting your children? How is that affecting your work? Like it just, every area plays or your spirituality you know, every area. So I a hundred percent agree with you about the balanced lifestyle. Well, I love what you represent because you do have, um, everyone should go visit your website and we'll put it all click away down here because not only do you talk about nutrition and cleanses, but you know, it's funny. I was a member of the gym before, um, COVID, you know, started and it was, I believe December of 2019, I came home one day for the gym and I would go every day. I would do cardio because Rep Recumbent Bike is so easy for me because yeah. I sit on it and I could answer my emails and scroll TikTok and everything. <laughs> so I would go for like an hour on the bike and then do Pilates class or I wasn't one, you know, me with my coordination. I wasn't one to do like <laughs> the other classes, but I could, I could handle Pilates. <laughs> um, but it came a point where I was sitting on the Recumbent Bike and I, I just there's a million of them, but of course this person sits like right next to you and everyone was coughing and sneezing. I'm like, I am out of here. This is before COVID because I'm a germaphobe. Yeah. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I came home. I said, Dave, call them up, get my membership canceled because it's just too germy there. I want to work out from home. So then the gym closed. I guess I'm a master manifester <laughs> because I didn't have to cancel my membership. The gym closed. Thank goodness. <laughs> so I may have caused cause COVID. I'm sorry, people, oh, because okay. I couldn't take the gym anymore. Um, so anyway, it, it became like a, a normal thing for people to really access what they have in their home for fitness. And what I love about you and, you know, 
you coming over here is I only have a couple of weeks weights in a yoga mat and you make it work um, yeah. with what we have around the house. And we've done some little videos on Instagram using like the rags um, on our feet and everything went just double pleasure because I get to mop the floors while I'm yeah, working exactly. out. <laughs> um, but that's what I love about you is you encourage people to use what they have at home and move your body with what you have. And it doesn't have to cost any money. So give us some tips on what you can do at home to start. Well, like you said, fitness, sorry, fitness is not about the fancy workout equipment. It's not about the Pilates machine or, you know, the $5,000, you know, bike or the elliptical because all these things can create the same exact results without the expense. And I, I don't believe expensive equipment works better. I, I really don't. Like you said, we use the rags in your kitchen and we clean your floor and you still are getting a killer ab workout. So I really encourage you to find stuff around your house, like a little step, like we use her stairs for a little, a little stepper or, you know, other things like my that. kitchen counter, we do push ups yep. against the kitchen counter. Exactly. Because fitness is meant to be a lifestyle. It could be done anywhere you, you know, you're at, at any time, no matter what you're doing. So I highly recommend that, but, you know, for example, use a gallon water as your weights or use laundry detergent as your weights as well. Or we do the kitchen rags for abs. Uh, what else do we do? You can use your couch to do like, you know, tricep Yeah, dip, like dips. Yeah. Dip. You know, we there's just so my pool. Many. My pool is a little raised for the bulldogs. We built a little wall around this, so we use that. But that's what I mean. It's like there's really no excuse to get off your ass and move your body because even if it's just a walk a day, and then you start to incorporate the little things like some push-ups. Because I can't do a regular push-up on the floor. Never have been able to. I just my upper body just doesn't allow. I think my head is just too heavy. I honestly feel, <laughs> I honestly feel if you were to try one, you would like kill it now. Okay. Well, I'm sure yeah, you're getting me there, but <clears throat> doing them against my kitchen counter, I'm seeing the results, you know, by just dipping down and doing them against there and it's building me up. So maybe I can one day do the push up on the floor. Um, but I never even thought to do that before. It's like, you know, I was kind of giving myself every excuse to not build my upper body up. Yeah. Um, but like you said, you you've got to drink this gallon of water anyway, you might as well use it as a weight. Totally. You know, you know and even if it's, you do a hundred squats a day or 20 push-ups a day, little daily changes add up to big results. And that happens in all areas of your life. Even same thing with your diet. If you do one thing better than the day before, you're still on your journey to progress, you know, progressing. And, you know, same thing with your workouts. If you're cooking dinner, waiting for, you know, the rice to boil or your water to boil, whatever, do 20 squats you know, yeah. and you'll, you'll feel better about it. You're even with 20 squats, you're releasing those endorphins as well, which is yeah. just helping you feel better and you're helping your body. Is there any truth to doing sit-ups before bed? I heard that once that it actually helps you like burn fat through the night. Uh, I wouldn't. There is, there's probably different, you know, scientific research about that. Any movement is going to help you build fat, but I don't think sit-ups alone are going to give you like this amazing six pack overnight. Like it's just not going to work that way. Unfortunately, fitness is not like an overnight change. It, unfortunately, it's, it's a journey. It's, you know, consistency is key and balance and it takes a long time. Just like yeah. someone who's gaining weight, they don't gain a hundred pounds overnight and you're not going to lose it. Also. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I used to always work out at night. Um, in my old life in New Jersey you because did? I had, yeah, because I worked so much, you know, I started early in the morning and I worked so much during the day. And then, you know, after Lexi was sleeping and that's the time that I was able to like jump on, jump on my, um, recumbent bike or my Pilates machine. I had both in the house and they were both in my bedroom. And it was amazing because I put on, you know, at the time I used that time I used to watch TV. I used to put on Bravo or E and just hop on the bike and then work out. And it did, surprisingly helped me sleep better. I would think that it would wake my body up and my energy would be so high, but it, it did at that time help me sleep better. I noticed the nights I didn't work out before I went to bed. Um, I was a little bit more restless. So, um, do you recommend that? I mean, it, it's different for everybody. Um, most people do well when they work out in the morning because it sets the mood for the whole day. Like, you know, if you're working out in the morning, you're more likely to drink more water, make better food choices. And like you said, 
if you're working out after work and you had a long day and you have kids and you've got dinners and putting people to bed and doing all these things, you're less likely to do it at night. But if, if you can do it at night, hundred percent, if it helps you, I feel like it's just finding your like perfect time for you. Mm-hmm. Like you said, some people can't work out in the morning because they have to work or. Yeah. You know, I'm just not time. a morning person. So it's not, if I have to be up and out by like seven 30, I'm not going to get up at five. So I have time yeah. to shower. I'm just not going to do it. I'd rather stay up until five. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. And the, I'm the complete opposite. If I don't work out in the morning, I'm like, hmm. Looks like it's lying for me tonight. (laughs) Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, that does make sense because when you put in that commitment in the morning and you're like, you get it over with, first of all, I mean, you never feel worse after workout. You always feel better. And then you will make better choices throughout the day because you're like, fuck, I worked out this morning. I'm not going to ruin it by eating this, you know, McDonald's right now. So you'll make a better choice throughout the day with your, um, with, you know, food or sweets or whatever. So that does make sense. I, I mean, now I, I have to get up somewhat early for my dogs. I train them well. They sleep until like eight o'clock. They do? Yeah. Well, when Dave's, it's funny because when Dave's here, he gets up much earlier than me because he works on both time zones and they know when he's here, they wake him up like sometimes like five thirty, six o'clock, they'll start barking. And they know with me, they're like, mom's just not going to wake up. So I'm not going to bother <laughs> wait for her to get up. I love that. <laughs> I wish my kids do that. Can you come train my kids? You know, Lexi was well-trained. She was well-trained. She loves to sleep like me. So oh, even when she was a baby, baby, um, I used to get her up for her first feeding and then put her back in bed and we'd sleep for like three or four hours more. Yeah. I love to sleep. You gotta teach Pisces. Your Okay. I'm, huh? I'm, I'm, I'm all open for your tricks on this one. You got to, okay. I'll that. come over and train your voice. Yeah. Um, you at 5 a.m. Every morning. Oh morning gosh. <laughs> no wonder why you work out. You just got to get away from them for a little bit. <laughs> That's exactly why I have a gym membership. <laughs> no other reason. <laughs> all right. So I want to talk real quick about, and we're going to go in depth when I have you on other times, but we're just covering a little bit of everything in fitness and wellness this morning. Um, let's talk about, your relationship with your body and how important that is. Um, I know that you showed me pictures of your body and you know what it was before you got on your fitness journey. And it, I can't even believe it's the same person. Um, not that you look bad before, because I actually, I, my mother has trained me to actually appreciate people with a little bit more weight on them. Like I know when I gain weight, my mother will be like, you look good. <laughs> So when I see Everybody someone needs a, little, a hype woman like that, in their yeah, <laughs> but when I get skinny, she's like, mm, I don't like it. Um, so I actually appreciate when people have a few pounds on them. I think there's something really beautiful about that, but you are like, your body is sick now. Like oh, everything is tight and right. So tell me a little bit about your journey. Okay. Well, to start off with, um, I, since I was literally like three years old, I remember like I was always considered obese. Like I just always found comfort in food. And, you know, every time I'd be watching TV, I'd always have to have a snack or I was in the car and I'd have a snack or, you know, my parents, when I would do good, they would reward me with like treats. So I kind of got into that habit of like, food is my comfort. And then I, you know, I went through family troubles and there was a lot going on. And then I also, I kept turning you know, to food for that comfort. And it just kept happening and happening and building up and building up over the years to the point where I was 202 pounds and not that that's a lot of weight, but I was on unhealthy 202 pounds. You know, I would binge eat. I'd hide the ice cream in my room and eat the whole, you know, the whole, not like a pint, like a, like a big one and like eat the whole box of cereal just because I was either bored or just finding that comfort. And I was so unhealthy, you know, I still played sports at that time, but that's where I realized you can't really out train a bad diet. Your diet is a direct reflection of how you were feeling and like what's going on in your life. And I always tell people that. So, you know, I, I finally realized like I kind of needed to like make a change. So I remember I was actually 12 years old at 202 pounds. Wow. I was bullied all through school, like all through school, through like elementary school, middle school, high school. My nickname was big P. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah, big P. So like, and I, I just remembered, like I used to pray at night and I'm like, why can't I be like small P? 
you know, and it, almost, oh. it almost got to the point where I was like, I'm going to be this way forever. Like I, I have to accept myself. And I just had a really hard time doing that. Like I couldn't really find that, like, this is me, you know, screw it. And I finally woke up one day and I, it, it took a lot to get to that point. Like it, not, it didn't just like happen overnight where, oh, I'm going to decide to go on my fitness journey. Like it was like a long time coming. And my mom actually told me, she was like, Hey, I'm going to hire a trainer for you. 12 years old. And I was so anti that. So anti, so, so, so anti. And I remember it was a male. He would come over to my house and he'd walk in my house. He's like, get up, stop eating. Let's go. And, um, he would kind of push me because I didn't have that support of anyone encouraging me, helping me like, Hey, you can do this. It was all me in my head. And I didn't think that I could do it. So day after day I was working out and I actually like found to like, enjoy it instead of thinking as working out as a punishment for like the way I looked, I actually used it as like, wow, I feel good when I work out or working out is great. I like it. I, you know, I enjoy it, but it came from, you know, and that, that happened over years and years and years. And during that time, I also went up and down in my weight because I was like, Oh, Hey, if I starve myself for a week, I can lose 10 pounds but then I gain it all back or I tried a different diet and then I gain it all back or I'd go to Rite Aid when I was 14 years old and I'd get all the like slim fast drinks or whatever. And I'd lose a couple of pounds and then I gain it all back and more. So it was constantly just the up and down battle. But then when I finally like accepted myself and realized, Hey, I am in control of what I put into my body and no one else around me. And, you know, I was in therapy and all these types of things. I was able to find that balance of, Hey, I can work out a little bit. I can eat what I want, but I can always just be consistent and practice balance. And that's what really changed my life in every area. You know, my husband met me when I was at one of my, you know, my heaviest point and he still loved me, but that just encouraged me to like, even do better. Like I can always be a better person. I can always do better. I can be better for the people who need me. And I feel like everything just came together once I like started accepting myself, realizing that like, I didn't need to use food as comfort. Yeah. Sorry. It's it's, story, but I'm like, it's like, it's crazy. It's important at my journey, like feeling like I remember when I was like, I was eight years old, like crying in my room, but I couldn't stop eating because I just didn't know what else to do. But like having that support from someone. And that's why I always encourage people like find a friend find a family member or someone who can inspire you and keep you accountable because it really helps to have that support system. I, that I didn't have someone that leads you or encourages you to do better, you know, and be better. It's like anything else, you know, uh, your childhood affects you in so many different ways, even if it wasn't bad, you know, for us, my mom was so strict. I remember there were times, you know, There was so many of us, 11 kids, we had to sit at the dinner table, not say a peep. And dinner time was like a little stressful because we weren't even allowed to, you know, at times my dad lightened up for the most part when he came home from work and he was in a bad mood, you were like, we had to sit there like army soldiers, you know, and if we didn't like, I I, I don't know if she did this a lot, but I know it happened a couple of times where if we didn't want to eat what she made, you know, because, you know, that's cooking for a lot of people, it would get like dumped over our head you know, and it was almost like finish everything on your plate. And those things like subconsciously stay in your mind. And I even have this thing where I called, I call it, and I've been saying it for years, the old Italian lady in me, like, I hate waste. And I think that's where it comes from is like, we were, when we were raised, you know, we were, there was like no waste allowed. You had, everything had to be finished. And that's what, you know, Dave loves to over order because he loves to, like his love language is like, give me one of everything. And then the old Italian lady in me is like, oh my gosh, I can't go to waste. And I eat it all. But I finally realized that I don't have to eat it all. And it's okay if there's some left in the plate. And, um, you know, I, the universe doesn't like waste, but also, so I've gotten him to control the ordering a little bit more, but I also, and finding like the little things that kind of shift that mindset is leaving a little in my plate, even if I'm still a little hungry, just the discipline of leaving something behind and letting my body and my mind know that it's okay. Definitely changed my eating, um, very recently. And I stopped being like, oh, I can't go to waste because that was something that I was conditioned to believe that you had to finish everything in your plate. And even if you didn't like it, it was wasteful if you didn't need it because um, it costs money, you know? 
Yeah. And that's what causes like eating disorders in a lot of people as well. So like, yeah, it's, it's very common for like childhood things to stem into adulthood or even later on in life. And, you know, some people aren't even fortunate enough to ever have that, like that balance, you know, thing that you've cut that realization that you've come to that you don't, well, you, God bless you. You did it in your twenties. You realize that, you know, I'm, well, it took took me my whole life to do it. So (laughs) I'm still working on it. But on the flip side of things for me, you know, because we grew up in such a big family, it wasn't like gourmet food. It was what we call peasant food. So it was big things of pasta and, you know, servings, like huge, huge serving size of things. I don't even know how to cook for two people. I only know how to make food for 20, but when I'm feeling like I need comfort food, I go to these pasta dishes. I go to these fatty things. And that was a big adjustment too, is not going to all these starchy things for comfort. You know, when I'm, it's a rainy day or if I'm feeling gloomy. Um, so it, it's, it's a mind, it's really a mindset. It's retraining your brain and really look at you know, your habits now with food and your relationship with food and where it stemmed from and kind of unpack that because along with that, there's other programming that of course needs to be um, undone and broken down. Um, But food is a big one. A lot of people don't realize how much of it stems from our childhood and, um, you know, what we have to look at. Exactly. And just like you said, it's the mindset. But if I were to, you know, offer any advice to someone, that, you know, maybe struggling with the same thing is just remember that you are in control of what you put into your body. Yeah. And it, even if you think about that, you know, every day, every time you're eating or, you know, remember that food only tastes good for 15 seconds in your mouth, like every, mm-hmm. like 15 seconds. Like, can, have you ever thought like, oh, you know, I just ate this big meal and then like, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. 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 You know, it's just little, little like mindset changes add up to like, wow you know, encouragement. So you can like, you think you can actually do it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and you know. it's, it's goes with fitness as well to, you know, control the controllables. It's like, you're in control of it. And also there's so many people now, especially, um, my gosh, all age, I'm not even going to say girls, my age, but, um, there's so many people dealing with immune disorders now and, um, are not able to move their body. So like, you have to change it, like to not, I have to work out, but I get to work out. Like I get to move not, my body. Not the punishment aspect. Yes. Yeah. You know, like I'm fortunate enough, that, you know, they're stemmed of like, you know, Oh, I got to go to the gym because I'm fat or I got to go to the gym because I need to lose weight or I need to work out because of this reason. It shouldn't be that way. It should be like, wow, I get to go to the gym today and move my body because I'm on my way to a better me. You know, that's the mentality you got to have. And it it takes time. Like, I'm not telling you like, you're going to be a different person overnight. And you know that like in your Mm -hmm. different journeys and spiritual journeys, nothing happens overnight, but the consistency is what, like, you just got to keep going and the determination to, you know, really get those goals. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend yesterday um, and th- he was telling me how he's been moving his body, like going for walks for a few hours a day and what a difference that made has made in his mental state and f- feeling positive and everything. So for nothing else, it's like, you really have to, we were talked about this before is the mind, body, spirit connection. And I'm really now paying attention to the physical and how much of a difference. So I can meditate all day, move my body and plan my, all of it, all I want. But if I don't look at the physical of it all and address my body and my fascia and everything that goes along with it. Um, it's just, it's not going to work. It's, it's really a combination of all three. And once you start one, the others will follow. So making yourself, you know, get up and move your body will clear your mind a little bit more, which will make you start thinking. And perhaps then you'll wake up and start getting on your spiritual journey. Um, and you know, it, it is all connected. So it's a, a people- great way to, Sorry, go great on. way to start. No, it's just a great way to start. You know, your spiritual journey is just move your body and you'll see what, what follows. Yeah. I, a lot of people think, um, fitness means like physical fitness, like the look, you know, and I need to work out cause I need to look, look a specific way or, you know, my butt needs to be bigger or my abs need to be more toned. But if you just focus on the health aspect of it, results will follow yeah. because if you have these, like you know, realist or these unrealistic results in, in your mind of how your body's going to look, it might not look like that. And you might get discouraged, but if you focus on just like the health, like you said, everything as a whole results will come. And I promise you that. Yeah. 
Well, tell us a little bit about um, what we can get from your website. Um, I know you have some a new at-home fitness um, workout routine you were telling me about. Yes, I have a lot, girl. I'll say there, there's a lot, lot going on. But um, so Paulina Fitness is, you know, my website. But what I promote is, you know, realistic dieting and exercise, you know, work smarter, not harder, but non-restricted eating effective yet short workouts, because a lot of time or a lot of people don't have an hour, two hours to go spend working out every day. I know I don't, I barely have 20, 30 minutes to do it, but I just focus on like, you know, health as a whole. So also the, um, accountability portion is what I feel like difference differentiates me from a lot of other trainers or nutritionists. I knew when I was 12 years old, I needed that trainer to come in and be like, get up. You got this. Come on, girl. You got this. So I love being that person for other people. So I have like a 12 week app. You can do it at home. You can do it at the gym. You can do it in a hotel room at work, wherever you want to do it. And it, you know, it tracks your sleep. It reminds you to drink water. It tells you exactly what to eat. And I'm, you can even message me and be like, Hey, I'm going out to dinner tonight. You send me a picture of the menu and I'll tell you exactly what to eat because we oh all gosh. need, we all need someone in our corner rooting us on. Like, I feel like I'm like, like you always said, I'm like the proud mom, like in the corner, I feel like I need to get like a flag or like something like jump up and down, you know? So like, that's, you know, that's basically what my website is, is realistic fitness and health, you know, and just, I love that. I love that. I know we've been working out and be, only because we started working out at the same time I was launching this podcast and this podcast has taken over my life. I haven't really been able to do much else and I haven't done the deep dive on your website um, or the app. But now, like I, of course, on Tech Challenge, you're going to have to show me like the app and everything. And I will bother oh, you, girl, you. now that I know I can ask you when I'm at a restaurant what I should eat. Yeah, girl, I was I'm like, even on my number, you can text me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I oh my God. So um, I love that you're doing this. I love that you're that cheerleader for all of us. Um, we're going to put all the links below, but I also think we should expand on it. And um, maybe for some of the people listening and watching, we can do like um, a separate little thing when we work out where you can like kind of join the Facebook group or something. And we'll give you some extra trips, tick, trip, tick. What am I saying? <laughs> I rubbed uh, off <laughs> tricks and tips uh, um, on like what we're doing together. Instead of just putting on Instagram, maybe we can have a little um, video we'll, we'll put up for some special letters. We'll, yeah. we'll come up with something for next time. Exactly. We'll give you a little code something or something. Yeah. But thank you so much. You're so freaking smart. I swear to God, like when I first met you, I'm like, damn, this girl, not only does she have the greatest ass ever, but she's so, <laughs> she's so smart. Oh, like you just rattle off every week what we're talking about. Well, this is why this is happening. This is why this is happening. And you're, you're super knowledgeable. So go to Pauline's website you. and poke around because you, she knows what she's talking about and um, follow our fitness journey, how she's um, getting me in shape and I'm feeling physically better than I have when I was, than I was in my twenties or thirties. So it makes me so happy. And I also wanted to say, thank you for having me on. And thank you for doing this podcast, because I feel like you're bringing light to so many different topics that people don't know about. And I, even I listen to it and I'm like, wow, I'm learning so much. So you may be learning a lot from me, but I'm also learning a lot from you. And I feel like Aww. that's the beauty of this. So thank you. Well, that's sisterhood. And that's what we're supposed to be doing is lifting each other up and teaching each other and learning from one another. So I love you. Thank you for being on. And um, you will see Paulina on my Instagram. So make sure you follow her and get to the website and follow our fitness journey and join along. See you next time. I'll okay, see you next week. Okay, bye-bye.